which had just within the span of two hours. It was the roadshow was uh, time for two hours, and he was given the goal. He was given all the bomb that is needed to build something, and he built a line. Uh, he built a home automation system in the span of two hours. There was one more student who actually built a servo motor application for agriculture. So basically, you spread these chemicals, uh, uh, you know, in, 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 in all these chemicals which you should not actually touch, and that is actually a healthy agricultural sector. So what he did was he built a servo motor and he, he, he put a long pipe along it and did some automation where he, he, he actually uh, and some timer where he spreads the chemical across the entire farm. That was something was done. He has done with this particular course. So those are the various kinds of ideas that I'm just giving you. That can get converted into a reasonable product. And when I say about product, there is, so if you could have heard about TAM, total addressable market, the term that you have seen, have you heard about total addressable market? So every product has got a total addressable market, and it is very difficult for one company to address all of them. So that's where these all these small, small startups basically you know, come up and they address the certain section of the market. And either they can go, I think they can go for an exit approach where they, some the company comes and buys them, that they can, they can go for that approach. Or maybe they can continue with the brand and try to address even more problems. There are both options which are available, uh, available with this company. Okay, so this is one of the outcome of, of uh, one of the notions that we have done. So the way the, the whole process works is, uh, and I'm, I'm going to show you, show you a real uh, live demo also. So in the first week, basically, we basically uh, you know, take a lot of applications over here. We ask them to write uh, uh, like what, what market is something which you are trying to, uh, which are, which are trying to address, what is the TAM for that particular market, is it really feasible to actually uh, 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 you know, enter that particular market. Or there is another option where you can actually invent your own product. For example, you think there is a solution that can address a reasonable amount of market, there is a problem statement over there and you want to invent something that also possible. Oh yeah. For example, the education board which I am showing you, this is this was the education board which is which is what you know here. There is I think there is no product in the, the, the market where you can see inside the chip. I don't think so whether any 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 uh, any uh, board where you can actually go and see what is the inside the chip also. The register file, you know, the all those things, the processor architecture, the processor micro architecture, I think there is no uh, such uh, this is something which is kind of invented in terms of students over here. So there is an option that you can also invent a new product which you think can address certain sections of the, uh, of the market. Or you can also do, you can take an existing market and you provide better solutions. That's what we do in, in, in week one. And in week one also we try to accept the slow code. So basically we do basically compile, if you are using uh, the uh, audio kits and all, it comes with uh, its own compiler. Uh, you have to basically run the uh, program and see whether it's compiled as well to your account. That's what similar thing is also available over here. So basically, you have to uh, submit a pseudo code, which is actually just by one of my students. Maybe let him explain you what he actually did to build the entire, uh, uh, entire uh, line follower and new automation system. And then I'll come back and I'll explain uh, further what, what uh, together we can, we can do. So, yeah, the other just come and uh, explain about uh, uh, the two projects that we did over here. Uh, so you guys, if anyone if you have worked with a line follower, you might be thinking that I can do it with an Arduino or any other project board also, right? But what's unique about this, I guess Kunal did cover the open source aspect. Now I'll cover it from a learning point of view also. So in an Arduino you write digital write pin on, right? Have you ever wondered what goes on behind that? No, right? So that's the speciality about VSD Squadron. You understand how the processor was designed. Like, have you wondered how a chip is designed? No, right? How the Verilog code was written? That's open source. The entire chip design process is open source. What's inside the chip? Like, if I, was, if I took the chip under a microscope and saw what I would see, right? That entire thing is available. Then after that, the entire firmware for this, right? Of how actually on a bit level, on an assembly level, I program a board. All of that is there. So when you work with that, you really understand how a product is built or how a system works. So again, if I go about the BSD squadron, yes, there were two IR sensors that would take an input if the line is white or black and they would pass the data to the l 293 d motor driver which would be controlling the motors. Sounds simple, but what if I told you to write this in the advantage of all these libraries are we are trying to get higher and higher the abstraction. So why do we uh, you guys like Python? 
because you know it's very easy you just have to type in English because it's one of the highest level of abstraction. Uh, but there is downsides for Python also where you uh, it's not uh, efficient compared to C. That's what they say. Right? Why is it? So all those things matter. So what we try to do is we try we try to write uh, this uh, this to write for example this to write. So basically I don't know what happens is uh, in the actual this to write uh, function you have uh, uh, the four values that are bit mass and they are just written. Okay. So here we are we are doing the same thing with our register. We have to map the registers that we have on basis pattern to the registers what they have done in RD. So this is one example. So like this we have many other libraries as you guys know like SPL library and I think uh, there are many more UI libraries on the policy. You can try to contribute. So we have a GitHub repository. You can just come up, see how it is done. You have to just mimic it. You have to just understand a little and mimic it. And you can just push in the code and be it's something that you're contributing to open source. So both of them told what is open source and how it is. So just imagine a scenario where you are in a startup as Sir started, and after ten years you are using other people's pro uh, proprietary tools, and you will have to keep paying them some royalty, right? In this scenario, if you are using uh, you know open source, you need not pay them. You will be earning that money to yourself, or you will be giving to your employees, or however it is. So for those reasons, even Sir is supporting open source. Even we expect that like, there's a lot of people who support open source. There's a good community which you guys can talk. So this is one example. So there are a lot more which, in which you can contribute to it, and you know we can see a lot more people contributing to the data repository. Uh, oh, you got a clear idea what I'm trying to tell, right? So this is one thing that we can do, and uh, we got enough support. So I'm learning from the other, so that I get to do things. So that's what we are trying to see here. We want the enthusiasm to come up and try to do stuff, right? So yeah, yeah. And and finally, um, uh, you know, the, what they both talked about customization. They try to customize this thing. So uh, you must have, uh, you know, going down for it. Is there a memory, you know, memory basically reads? Anybody has a uh, uh, has a research about how much does the memory cost you? So over here we are just using for MB of RAM and some code. This is virtual internal memory. And the reason we are able to use such short memory is because we are able to customize the core size to such a level that it actually reduces the size of the memory. Let's say, you know, if your memory, uh, 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 let's say, audio mode, for example, your memory will cost you, let's say, 200 rupees, for example, just as a little number. And if I have to sell 10,000 of this particular memory, 2,000, uh, uh, 200 rupees, may I have to sell 10,000 memories. And let's say this memory is, uh, uh, let's, let's talk about 10 MP of memory, some small uh, wind bond, wind bond company that buys this particular memory. Just imagine if, if you if you are not using 10 MP of memory, and what if your end application is only about 1 MP or 10 to 5 MP? If you can actually stream down your entire cost from 200 rupees to, to uh, uh, 10, 50 or 20 rupees, and that actually multiplied by 10 rupees. That is the amount of savings, that is the amount of revenue that you are talking about. So, the, uh, the exercise that we all did in the last uh, 10 years is how to basically keep the bomb cost very low. Because right now you are developing applications, you are getting the boards for free, maybe colleges present the boards to you, you are getting the tools, license also, I, think, I guess, you are getting it for free. You are not paying for the licenses. The moment you move up, go from a, from a college to a company, all these things starts mattering. The bomb, the bill of materials that actually starts mattering. Even a save of 50 rupees or 100 rupees in the entire bomb cost, multiplied by 10,000, that's the amount of money that you are actually saving. That comes back to you as a revenue revolution. Again, these all discussions, it might, it will happen very soon because all of you being in the third year, you have to understand you know, the cost, uh, uh, the cost aspect of it. And that's where all this customization and open source actually helps us. And if you see into the uh, different, the, the, the other topics that we are uh, thinking of uh, of the hackathon, uh, for, for the hackathons, of course, uh, all of you are uh, uh, you free to contribute to what we are doing over here. There's educational toys that you are expecting to be reach about 34.3 billion by 2026. This is one of the very good market educational toys. It is very difficult to cover all of that by, by one company. So there are there are uh, multiple companies who are looking to research. Interactive toys, digital consoles, those I think we'll just take a photo of this one. You get to know one of the different topics that uh, uh, that can be, uh, we, can, we can target. consume less power, if you consume less power, you have the batteries that is what is operating, so you basically save on the batteries and eventually you basically save on the revenue also. So that's how everything is related. So three things, power, performance and area. There are three metrics that everything should be uh, should be uh, taken care of while designing any product and which eventually correlates to your revenue also. That's what we will be talking more about revenue because everything is related to uh, the revenue, the revenue cycle. So this chip also itself, you can actually customize and, and try to get your own version of the customized version of the chip, which for, for example, you might not need some of the features. You can just copy it out, build your own custom chip, and then basically build your own. That feature are also basically flexibility is also. It's a four-month cycle to build a new chip. 
generally takes four months to uh, to uh, to build this one getting back invested. So that is the amount of second that we have to spend. But yeah, that option is also available in this Okay, so it, it might be also possible, you know, at a mega or a skip that you do. Uh, all you are doing is just uh, you know, uh, doing some sensing applications. You are not using the you are not using the chip to expose its fullest extent. You are not using all the features of the chip. So you can basically use the facility to knock off those features and use only what you need. That's basically called an ASIC. It's called application specific ASIC. You know, ASIC is the one that we can set up that we are using. So that is also a, a part, of, part of the whole thing. Uh, uh, so this this call this uh, particular presentation was just to uh, make sure you basically open up open up on uh, advanced uh, you know, some advanced set of thinking that how to basically reduce all the terms of terms of cost power for them and say how to basically try to optimize this this particular course uh, only to open up that and yeah we'll have some later presentation also to explain the implementation yeah. So it's not the just like So if I integrate some other model, so like if I uh, uh, so if I manipulate or like the 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 so then, like for example, let's take drone or scrap. So how long I can watch the game? Like what's the actual distance? So for drones, it's mainly when you have transceivers, right? So it depends. One is on the bandwidth of. So like a normal drone will use a 900 megahertz or a 400 megahertz channel. So depending on that, a bandwidth of that, that's one distance. And apart from that, you get dishes. So I worked on a drone where we had a two kilometer range, right? So we had a special antenna for that, and that operated on the five gigahertz band. So it depends on what kind of data you're transferring. Based on that, you can decide what range you want to go. Yeah. So image you cannot transfer over 900 megahertz, right? We will not. So for that, we have a special transfer receiver. So we use uh, ubiquity transfer receivers. Or another, if you want an even higher range, you can go for wireless, like cellular base. So you get uh, modules where you can put a SIM and that will directly connect to your cellular network and you can transfer over that. So how efficient is the Raspberry Pi? So Raspberry Pi is not, is not going to affect your uh, you know, transmission range. Right? That is a mic uh, microprocessor that is controlling your Transfer.